Let's talk about arcs of circles. What are they, and how do we measure them? In order to do that, we're going to need to review some knowledge from first semester. So in this warm-up activity, I'd like you to calculate the measures of each of these four angles listed to the left, using the diagram on the right. Pause the video and try it now. Let's see how you did. The measure of angle ABC, well, that's just a straight line. And we know that straight lines, or straight angles, measure 180 degrees. The measure of angle DBE can be found using that knowledge that the measure of angle ABC is 180 degrees. Because using the angle addition postulate, I would know that 68 plus the measure of angle DBE plus 24 would have to equal 180 degrees. So solving that equation, we would find that the measure of angle DBE is 88 degrees. What about the measure of angle FBC? Well, it forms vertical angles with this given 68 degree angle, because these two lines intersect and these two angles are non-adjacent angles formed by the intersection of those two lines. Therefore, the measure of angle FBC must be 68 degrees. And last, let's calculate the measure of angle ABF. Well, it forms a linear pair with the 68 degree angle that we were given. These two angles are adjacent angles whose non-common sides are opposite rays, therefore they're a linear pair which means they have to add up to 180, so that means that the measure of angle ABF must be 112 degrees. We will be using all of this knowledge in what we're doing today, because circles have angles as well, and we can use our knowledge of linear pairs and vertical angles to help us solve for missing angle measurements in circles. A central angle is an angle whose vertex is the center of a circle. So for example, angle ACB is a central angle, of circle C, because its vertex is point C, and point C is also the center of the circle. The angle intersects the circle at point A and point B, and this curved segment, basically the pizza crust, that connects point A to point B is called an arc. When you're writing the name of an arc, you draw a little arc on top of the two letters, so this would be called arc AB. We can classify arcs by how big they are. If an arc measures less than 180 degrees, then we call it a minor arc. So PS would be an example of a minor arc, and so would SR. Minor arcs are named with only two letters. But if it's a major arc, you're going to have to use three letters to indicate where that arc is. Major arcs measure more than 180 degrees. For example, arc SRP. That's more than half of the circle, and therefore it's more than 180 degrees. If it measures exactly 180 degrees, then it is half of a circle, and we call it a semicircle. Semicircles are also named with three letters, so arc PSR would be considered a semicircle. So let's take a look at this diagram and classify each of these arcs as being major, minor, or a semicircle. FB, well, it's kind of easy to identify minor arcs because they're the only ones that get two letters, so even without looking at the diagram, I could identify that FB must be minor. But also when you look at the diagram, it is less than half of the circle, it's less than 180 degrees, so FB must be a minor arc. Arc FBC is half of the circle, FC is a diameter, that's an easy way to identify that it's exactly half, so I would call FBC a semicircle whereas FBD, going all the way around from F to B through C to D, that's more than 180 degrees, so FBD would be a major arc. ED is this little baby arc right here, that must be a minor arc, definitely less than 180 degrees. Arc DBE, on the other hand, is almost the entire circle, so we would definitely call that a major arc. And then last but not least, we have ECB, and that's exactly half of the circle. It's exactly 180 degrees, so we call it a semicircle. The measure of an arc is equal to the measure of its central angle. So if the measure of angle XYZ is 60 degrees, then the measure of arc XZ is also 60 degrees. Whatever this degree measure is, the arc's degree measure will be the same thing. You can calculate the measure of the major arc, ZWX, by subtracting from 360 degrees. 
a full circle is 360. So if I know that part of that circle is 60 degrees, then this major arc ZWX would have to be 300 because that's 360 minus 60. So let's calculate some arc measures. What's the measure of arc EG? Well, since angle EFG is 121 degrees, and EG is the arc formed by the intersection of that central angle with the circle, I know that EG must be the same thing. EG is also 121 degrees. EHG is the remainder of the 360. The whole circle is 360. Arc EG was 121. So to find out the measure of arc EHG, I would subtract 121 from 360. So the measure of arc EHG must be 239 degrees. You might remember in first semester we learned about the segment addition postulate and the angle addition postulate, and now we're learning the arc addition postulate. And they all basically say the same thing, that little part plus little part equals the whole thing. So I could say that the measure of arc AC, this whole arc, is equal to the measure of arc AB plus the measure of arc BC. So let's use this knowledge to help us calculate some of the arc measures in this diagram. You'll notice that some of the labels on this diagram label arcs and some label angles. But that's fine, because remember that central angles are equal to the measure of the arc that they intercept. So I would be able to tell that arc DC must be 59 degrees because the measure of angle DEC was also 59 degrees. The measure of arc CB is super easy to identify because it was already labeled for us. That must be 71. But let's put it all together and figure out the measure of arc DB. Arc DC is 59, arc CB is 71, so I can add those two arcs together to get to the total measurement of this arc. It must be 130 degrees. What about the measure of arc ABC? Well, AC is a diameter. It's a straight angle is another way to think about that. So the measure of arc ABC must be 180 degrees because it's a semicircle or because its central angle measurement is 180 degrees. So then how could I figure out the measure of arc AB? Well, if I know that this entire arc, this semicircle is 180, and I know that part of it is 71, then I can just subtract 71 from 180 to figure out the measure of arc AB. It must be 109 degrees. Essentially what you just did is use linear pairs. We don't call them linear pairs when we're talking about circles because we're talking about the arc measures, not so much the angle measures, but it's the same exact concept. So since this whole thing added up to 180, part of it was 71, the remainder must be 109. So same idea here to figure out the measure of arc AD. I can tell that arc ADC is a semicircle. This whole thing has to add up to 180 degrees because it's half of a circle. So if part of it is 59, then the other part of it must be 121. Let's try another example. What's the measure of arc ST? It's actually 34 degrees because of vertical angles. Since this arc is labeled as 34 degrees, I know that the measure of PUQ must also be 34 degrees because the measure of a central angle is equal to the measure of the arc that it intercepts. So if this is 34, then this is 34 by vertical angles. And again, since the measure of a central angle is equal to the measure of the arc that it intercepts, ST must also be 34 degrees. So I could figure out the measure of arc RT next, because if I know that part of it's 58 and the other part of it we now know is 34, I can add those two measurements together and find out that the measure of arc RT is 92 degrees. Now let's calculate the measure of arc PTS. Well, PS is a diameter, which means PTS must be a semicircle, and semicircles measure 180 degrees. Knowing that this entire thing is 180, and that this little part was 34, will allow us to calculate the measure of arc PT. I'll just subtract 34 from 180 and find out that the measure of arc PT is 146 degrees. To figure out the measure of arc RQ, I can use the fact that QRT is also a semicircle. This whole thing has to add up to 180, and I know part of it is 58, part of it is 34, so I can subtract 58 and 34 from 180 to figure out that the measure of arc RQ must be 88 degrees. So to figure out the measure of arc SQT, 
Well, that's basically the entire circle, except for this little part right here. So you really have two options for how you can calculate the measure of arc ST. You can take the measure of the entire circle, which is 360, and subtract the part that you don't want, which is 34. Or you could also add 58, and 88, and 34, and 146, and get to the same answer. All right, let's incorporate some algebra with this. How could I write an equation to solve for x? Well, I see that the measure of arc BCD must be 180 degrees. BD is a diameter, so that must mean that this is exactly half of a circle. So I can say that 4x plus 6x plus 10 is equal to 180. Again, this is really the exact same thing as linear pairs. These two angles form a linear pair, and therefore they add up to 180 degrees. So 10x plus 10 equals 180, 10x equals 170, so x must be 17. What could I do with these two variable expressions? Well, these are vertical angles, and the measure of central angles are equal to the measures of the arcs that they intercept, so these two arcs must be equal to each other. So I can write that 18x minus 19 is equal to 14x plus 13. Solve that equation, and we find out that x equals 8. We've got two variables to solve for in our next problem. I see an x here and here. I see a constant here, and I see a y here. Let's try to solve for the x's first. These two arcs would have to add up to 180 degrees because arc LMN is a semicircle. So let's start there. 5x minus 2 plus 5x minus 8 is equal to 180. Solve that, and we get that x equals 19. Okay, well how is that going to help me to figure out the value of y? Well, I know that this entire circle adds up to 360, and I now could figure out what the measures of arc LM and MN are by plugging in 19. So I can add 5 times 19 minus 2, and 5 times 19 minus 8, and 57, and 11y plus 2, and set it equal to 360. So solve all of that, and we find out that y must be 11. And that's all you need to know about solving for central angle measures and arc measures. In our next part of this lesson, we're going to learn how to calculate the measure of an inscribed angle.